Good morning, students. In the previous class, you have learned terminologies to explain the different kinds of corolla found among the angiosperms. And so far, you have learned two models of the flower: the calyx, corolla, and also perianth. All the three fall under the category of accessory models of the flower. And all, after studying all these accessory models, what you are going to do is you are going to count the number of segments there. You are going to check whether they are free or fused. Based on that, you are going to use the terminology there. And what is the shape of the calyx or corolla or uh, the perianth? There is no definite shape to the flowers having perianth. Then you are going to explain the color of that uh, sepal or petal or perianth. Either it is sepaloid or it is petaloid. You are going to mention that. You can very specifically mention the color of the corolla also with respect to the corolla character. And apart from this, you are going to explain the estivation in the uh, flower, estivation of all the units of these accessory parts of the flower. So based on the type of estivation, there are five different kinds. Uh, yesterday in the previous class, you have studied valvular estivation if they are just in touch with each other. Twisted estivation if there is regular overlapping in the floral whorls or the units of the whorl. Then it is imbricate when it is one is completely out, one is completely in. Remaining sepals or petals are partly in and out. Then it is to be called as imbricate estivation. When conchial, the whorl must contain five segments there. Out of five segments existing in the flower, two will be out, two in, and one partly in and out. Very specifically, very important kind of estivation is called as vexillary. Vexillary type of estivation is found only in the flowers having papillinaceous corolla, where there are three different kinds of flowers: the standard petal, the wing petal, and the keel petals. Together, they are going to be arranged in a special kind of manner, and that mode of arrangement is called as the vexillary kind of estivation. Exclusive character of family papillinaceae. So family. It is. It's not a family. It's a subfamily, Papilionaceae. And with that, all the accessory whorls are completed. So go through all the terminologies repeatedly. Uh, pronounce the uh, terminologies and try to catch the meaning of each and every term so that you can remember the terms very easily. It will be very much helpful to study the family character in the taxonomy part of your uh, paper. Today I am going to continue with the third part of the flower. That is the end ratio. Out of four distinct whorls of the flower, the calyx, corolla, end ratio, and end ratio. End ratio and end ratio are the third and fourth whorl whorls of the flower. They are the compulsory parts of the flower because in the definition itself, the flower is defined as the reproductive part of the plant, which is very specially meant for sexual reproduction. Bearing male and female reproductive parts, and this is one of the third part of the flower. This is one of the reproductive part of the flower, and this is male reproductive part consisting of individual units called as stamens. Stamens are the individual units of the endrasium, and to describe the endrasium in the uh, plant character or the or in the uh, as the taxonomy part, so the stamens are the male reproductive structure. All of you know what is a stamen. The stamen is always provided with a stalk-like part, and it is consisting of the fertile part. And this fertile part of the stamen is called as an anther, and this part is called as a filament. Filament is the supporting part of the stamen. It may be long or it may be short, depends upon the uh, flower. So it is not of. It may be of same height or it may be of different height. And there are various kinds of these modifications of these filaments. Also, you will come to know in the further part of your study. So this is the common structure of the general structure of the stamen. And each stamen is made up of a stalk-like part that is called as a filament, and the functional part is called as an anther. And this anther is capable of producing the pollens, or the microspores are going to be produced. The male reproductive structures, the pollens are going to be produced from the fertile part of the stamen that is called as an anther. Okay. Now we are going to study or start with the endrasium model. The first part of study in the endrasium. Take the flower which you are studying, in which you have described calyx and corolla. Now you are going to describe the endrasium of that particular flower. The first part which is to be seen in the with respect to the endrasium is you have to count the number of stamens. Okay, as you have done. 
within the study of calyx corolla and uh, perianth also you have first thing is to count the number of stamens you can count the number of stamens in the flower and up to 10 it is okay and if it is more than 10 you must describe it as many in number okay 1 to 10 you can write the specific numbers okay if the flower is consisting of uh, 1 to 10 number of stamens you can write the specific number or if it is more than Suppose if the stamen, the flowers, uh, flower is consisting of more than 10 number of stamens and in that case it is to be described as many. For example, hibiscus flower, we cannot count the number of stamens present in hibiscus flower. All the members of Margaisi family, hibiscus family is called as Margaisi. Margaisi is the hibiscus family. Lady's finger, the cotton plant belongs to family Margaisi. And this family is characterized by indefinite number of stamens. There are many number of stamens and it is to be described as indefinite. Indefinite number of stamens in the hibiscus family. And to remember the family, Margaisi is a, the, one of the example from a member of the family is hibiscus. So you can write it as hibiscus family. But the exact name for the family is Margaisi family. So first thing you are going to write the number of stamens, count the number of stamens and write down. After that, after counting the number of stamens, you have to see that whether the stamens are free or fused. Free or fused. If it is free, it's okay. So you, if you take the stamens of, if you, if you are studying the Cesarpinia flower, in that case, Cesarpinia flower is consisting of 10 number of stamens there. Whenever you are drawing the diagram of stamen or style or any radially symmetrical parts of the flower, you have to draw with two lines. Don't draw like this. Okay? It is a radially symmetrical organ of the flower. It is a rule of taxonomy. So that you have to use two lines to represent the filament of the stamen or it may be a style or a stalk or a pedicel or a petiole of the leaf. So this is the free condition of the stamen. If there are five number of stamens, all the five stamens are free from one another. Then you write it as all stamens are free. If they are fused, in that case comes there are different types of stamens if the stamens are described as fused. Okay. Based on the fused nature of the stamens, And 
polyhedensis. There are three different kinds of stamens which fall under the category of adult free. The meaning of adult free is the filaments are fused and anthers are free. You can count the number of stamens in that. If you try, you can count the number of stamens because all the anthers will be free, but the filaments are fused. Okay, that condition is called as adelphus condition. More adelphus. It may not be in mona is single. If all the stamens, the filaments present of the uh, the stamen filaments of all stamens are fused to form one bundle, single bundle, then it is to be called as more adelphus condition. Here, many number of stamens which are present in the flower are grouped into one bundle. They are grouped into one bundle. All of you have seen hibiscus flower. It is an example for monodelphus condition. You have seen hibiscus flower on which there is a long style like structure, red portion. These are the many number of stamens which are formed. And if you have not seen, you can check the flower and its structure here. This is not connected with you. Only this much portion, observe this. And these are the stamens which are in indefinite number there. All the stamens of this hibiscus, there are many in number. Small portion of the filament is free, remaining part of the filament is fused to form this long tubular structure. And this part is called as stamina tube. This is a part of the stamen itself. Okay, it is not part of the gynecium. It is a stamina tube. And why it is called a stamina tube is because the filaments of the stamens are fused to form the tubular structure that is called a stamina tube and all the anthers are free. But Whatever may be the number, there may be 50 number of stamens or there may be 40 number of stamens, all the stamens are held in one group or one bundle and hence it is to be called as monodelphus. And again uh, specifically, the hibiscus family, the all members of hibiscus family, that is Malvesi, is an example for the flowers which are having monodelphus condition of the stamens. Diodelphus condition, accordingly, if the stamens of the flower are bundled into if you find two bundles of stamens, whatever may be the number of stamens there, if they are divided into two different separate bundles, then it is to be called as diadelphus condition of the stamen. This is very specifically found in pea plant. Some members of Papillomaceae are example for having the diadelphus condition of the stamen. I will draw the diadelphus condition. Among these members, among the flowers which are having diadelphus condition of the stamen, the total number of stamens are 10. 10 number of stamens are present in the flower. Out of 10 stamens, the grouping is, it is arranged in such a way that 9 plus 1 condition. Generally, it is described as 9 plus 1 condition. I will draw the diagram of the bad of stamen. And in this case, you will get the stamina cube. Why is stamina cube like this? A membranous part holding 9 stamens together. 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. Okay. Here. Filaments of all 9 stamens are fused to form the stamina tube. Where is the 10th one? The 10th one will be completely free. Okay. 10th stamen is completely free. That 10th is why it is to be described as 9 plus 1. And you can't write it as 9 plus 1. Simply you write 9 plus 1 and sit. No. You have to mention. You have to describe. What is, what is the nature of bundling in such kind of flowers? That in case of such kind of flowers having the diadectus condition of the stamen, the filaments of 9 stamens are fused to form the stamen and tube where the 10th stamen is completely free. So you find two bundles here. One free stamen and 9 together in one bundle. And this condition of the flower is called as diadectus condition of the flower. And P is example and there are few plants which belong to the same family Papillonaceae are example for the diadelphus condition of the stem. Then the polyadelphus condition, you know, well, if it exceeds 2, there is no triadelphus condition or tetradelphus condition and so on. So directly if you find more than 2 bundles of stamens in a flower, it is to be described as polyadelphus condition of the stamens. Poly means more than 2. Okay. If there are more than 2 bundles of stamens in the flower, then it is to be called as polyadelphus condition of the stamens. And in this case, the flowers of citrus species, citrus, 
lemon. Lemon species are called as citrus. The most of the members which belong to Rutaceae, the family Rutaceae. Citrus belongs to family Rutaceae. I think you have the family in the taxonomic part. Rutaceae family and some members of Rutaceae family, exclusive example is citrus species. They are example for having many number of stamens which are arranged in polyadelphous condition. And in case of polyadelphous condition, the stamen, the stamen arrangement is like this. So that there will be an ovary of the flower. Around this, you will find there is no fixed number of stamens on the on each bundle. It may hold three stamens, four stamens, or five, and so on. And if this is the condition, you will, you will find that one flower is having many number of stamens, but the filaments of different number of stamens. Here in this bundle there are three, in this there are four, again three, in this here there is five. And it is not fixed always in case of polyadipose condition. The filaments of some stamens are fused to form the stamen and tube. Again, this is called a stamen and tube. Filaments of all stamens, they are fused to form a stamen and tube there and only anthers are free on the top. And this condition is described as polyadelphous condition of the stamen and found in the citrus species. This is with respect to adelphi. You are going to count the number of stamens. Write down the number of stamens. See that whether they are free or fused. If they are free, no question, no further description. If they are fused, then you have to mention whether it belongs to Adelphi. Now, you have studied what is Adelphi and what are the different kinds of Adelphus condition in the flower. Adelphi means the filaments are fused and anthers are free. If all the filaments of the stamens are fused to form one bundle, then it is to be called as monodelphus. If they are in two separate bundles and it is called as diadelphus, if they are in more than two bundles, it is to be called as polyadelphus condition of the stamens. Continue with the Sinjani. The next time, They are Jarbera, Aster, 
chrysanthemum, marigold, zinnia, dahlia. They are all members of this aspiracy family. And aspiracy is a very one very specific family which is having this kind of stamen. You need not search for this kind of stamen in any other family. It's exclusive character of the family aspiracy because one chinia flower or one dahlia flower. It is not one flower. It is an inflorescence holding hundreds of flowers in one bunch. It is an inflorescence. The inflorescence is called as head or capitulum type of inflorescence where you get the stamens are in, arranged in syngenesious pattern. This is syngenesious kind of stamen. Okay. Then the third type of stamen is called as cynandrous. Cy Again, here sin, actually syngenesis you have studied. Sin meaning is fused. Okay. The sin is fused. Andrus, andrus. All stamens are fused. So, firstly, you have studied the adelphi where the filaments are free, filaments are fused, anthers are free. Second one, syngeny, where anthers are fused, filaments are free. This is the third condition we call it as synandrus where all the five stamens, both anthers as well as filaments are fused. Anthers and filaments are fused to form a solid cylinder. In case this is uh, formed in case of, uh, again this is a family character. Get the column like this. You will find S like bands over the anchor column and the base you get the solid column. The stamen looks like this. If you take out one flower and observe the stamen, the entire staminal structure, the male reproductive part appears like this. The fertile part producing pollen having S like bands over it because the flower contains five stamens. They may be arranged in 2 plus 2 plus 1 condition or it is fused there, completely fused. This part is called as anther column. And all the filaments are also fused to form filament column. Okay. Cynandrus or the same statement is also called as S shape. So it is called as S shape because you will find S like bands over the anther part, anther column part of the endrachium. So this is the third pattern of fusion. If it is fused, adelphi where the filaments are fused, anthers are free. Syngeny, the anthers are fused, filaments are free. Cynandrus, anthers are fused to form anther column. Filaments are also fused to form the filament column. Both are fused. Okay. So these are the three conditions of the fused stamens found in different flowers. That is to be explained. You need not explain. You are, you are going to use the word. That's it. You are going to write it as stamens are many. Many number of stamens. Secondly, you are going to see that it is they are fused. Monadelphus, diadelphus or polyadelphus. Or it is cylindry or it is cinchary. Like this. But for morphology part, this description is essential. After completing this, the next part of study in the impression is you have to see that whether the stamens are epipetalous, epicephalous, or epiphyllous. You know there are three different accessory parts in the flower. You can make out epi is again on above, on the, on the, on the petals. If the stamens are attached to petals, it is to be described as epipetalus. If the stamens are present on the sepals, it is to be described as epicephalus. If they are present on the perianth, it is to be described as epiphyllus. Generally, epipetalus stamens are found in case of gamopetalus corolla. Flowers with gamopetalus corolla. Flowers with gamopetals corolla are example for the epipetalous condition of the stamen. And in this case, all of you have seen Dathura flower. Dissect open the Dathura flower if you get the Dathura flower around your home or in your hometown or roadside. Just check. 
the stamens only this much portion of the anther will be free the filament will be free remaining portion of the stamen you cannot pluck out easily because this portion of the stamen is attached to the petals so if the stamens are arising from the petal it is attached this is a combination of stamen with petal okay it is called as epipetalous condition of the stamen most of the gamopetalous flowers are example for Uh, corolla is example for having epipetalous condition of the stamens epicephalus this is a combination of stamen with sepals very rarely found sepals are the outermost parts of the flower calyx it's a unit of the calyx so if you find a combination of stamen along with the sepal then it is to be described as epicephalous in nature exclusively found in the member of comrades family the name of the plant is Quisqualis. This is Quisqualis is the plant, or that that is the plant in which the flower is characterized by the presence of stamens on the sepals. The same condition. All of you might have seen the Quisqualis in the Rangoon paper, where it is having a long, uh, uh, that is a calyx tube. You get the Quisqualis flower. The flower appears like this. Okay, these are the petals. And this is the calyx tube actually. All the five petals are fused to form a long calyx tube, and these are the petals. They are free. Petals are also attached to the sepals. The epicephalous condition is formed. And on this calyx tube, you will find the stamens arranged like this. They are attached of different height. The stamens of different height can be seen in this in this flower, where all the filaments remain attached to the sepals. And it is to be called as epicephalous condition of the uh, stamens, and found in the flowers of Quisqualis plant. It is a common type of family member. Epiphyllus, the stamen attached to the combination of stamen with perianth, it is called as epiphyllus, or you can write it as tepal. Stamen and tepal combination is called as epiphyllus in nature. Most of these uh, uh, members of Amanalidaceae. The previous class we have taken down the same example for this is Amanalidaceae and Crinum is the example specific example for the flower having the epiphyllous nature of the stem. Okay, this is to be explained. See that whether the stamen is free, then it's no there is no further description. If they are present fused, we are going to write about Adelphid syngenia and Cynatus condition. And apart from that, we are going to check whether the sepals are in combination with stamens, whether the petal is in combination with the stamen, or if the flower is consisting of perianth, whether it is in combination with the stamen. And accordingly, we are going to use the terms epipetalous, epicephalous, or it may be epiphyllous in nature. Then, after this, so you are going to check. the height of the filament height of the filament just to mention whether the filament is short or it is long okay filament is long or short or nature in some case in very specifically in the family anonesi and magnoliaceae the filaments are flat very important character of the family flat filament flat flat and filaments are found in the flowers so this is with respect to the height of the filament okay then on the basis of the height of the filament itself based on this height of the filament Based on the height of the filament, there are two conditions of stamens in different flowers. The first condition is called as diadems condition of the stamen. The second is called as tetradiadems. 
these are the two conditions of the statements dynamics meaning is you can write it as in bracket as 2 plus 2 whereas in case of tetradynamics you can write it as 4 plus 2 the first case right i am going to start with the dynamics condition of the statements and in case of flowers having dynamics condition of the statement over it
These are all technical terms. We cannot avoid these terms. It's very difficult to remember. I can, may I draw? May I write another word? No, it's not possible. We have to write the same word. Okay, there is no alternate word. Along with is the meaning of adnate. So in case of adnate statements, the adnate statement appears like this. Swinging the process, swinging mechanism of anchor. 
character there because most of the grasses, it is a conformed character, all the grasses they are wind pollinated plants. Wind is the pollinator, wind is the uh, carrier of the pollen from one plant to the other plant which helps in the process of pollination. So that there is no color, no fragrance, no nectar in such kind of flowers. That is why this is one of the adaptations which favors the wind pollination that is what is anemophily and among such kind of flowers you find this kind of anchor where it is called as the versatile type of anchor. All grasses are example. Or you can write the family Poaceae. Okay. Poaceae is grass family. Grass, sugarcane, bamboo, they are the members of the grass family. And all these grasses are characterized by versatile type of stem. Okay, got it? The adnate, the anchor runs along, the connective runs along with the anchor lobes here. It becomes a flat kind of anchor and it is called as adnate, formed in anonesi, magnolesi, nymphesi, etc. The second is basic fixed, where the filament is attached to the base of the anchor, the most common type. If the filament is attached to the back side of the anchor, then it is called as dorsal fixed. Not so long and long anchors are found in that kind of flower, whereas in case of versatile, exclusively in poesy, anchor is also long, filament is also long and weak, so that it can swing all over 360 degree, rotate and release pollens during the process of pollination. It can swing and rotate uh, around 360 degree, it will release the pollens, helps in the process of anemophily because wind is the carrier of the pollens. So this is about the fixation of the anchor to the filament. Now, the adhesions of the anchor. Finally, but you have to mention anchors is made up of the lobes, two lobes, and we have to mention about the adhesions of the anchor. How it is going to be high. The adhesions is a mechanism, it is a process where the anchor wall is going to break open to release the pollen. So it is going to open up when the anchor is ready to release the pollen, the wall of the anchor cracks open and releases the pollen. And discharged pollen will be carried away by the wind or it may be an insect or it may be a butterfly or a bird and it helps in the process of pollination. There is a behind cracking open of the anchor wall, break open of the anchor wall to release the pollen. And based on that, we are going to write the Dyson's pattern. The first one is transverse. Second is longitudinal. And the third is called as porous. Okay. There are three different types of Dyson's pattern among the different patterns, uh, different uh, flowers, transverse, longitudinal and porous. And you know the meaning transverse. So transverse is a characteristic type of denizens found in family Malvasi members only. Found only in Malvasi family because the Malvasi family, I discussed family, is made up of and characterized by the presence of a kidney shaped anchor like this. You check the hibiscus flower. Okay. So you get the hibiscus flower from your home garden and check the anchor shape. It is bean seed like or it is kidney like and it is made up of only one cell like this. So only one cell. And it is the filament found in the anchor. Exactly it is bean seed like. And this kind of anchor it is one cell. Okay. This is single cell anchor. No two cells are found in the anchor. And in this case it is if you touch the flower about 9 to 10 a.m., okay, morning, late, after 9 or 10, 10 o'clock, if you pluck the hibiscus flower, you will feel that yellow color dust sticks to our body or yellow color dust sticks to our cloth. Why? That's the type of dehiscence of the anchor. It's a type of uh, dehiscence of the anchor or it is the anthesis. It is called as anthesis process. And here, the anchor is going to crack open in this pattern, okay, transverse pattern. So all these pollens will be discharged out and the yellow color dust is nothing but the pollens which are going to come out of the these are the pollens which are going to come out of the anchor and this kind of nascence is called as transverse nascence found in the members of Malvasi family because it is one set anchor. Longitudinal, vertical, okay. If you find two anchor lobes in the stable like this, most common type. Okay. In this case, the anchor is going to break up in this pattern. So what they are? Or longitudinal. You will find all these pollens are discharged from this pattern or from this slit. Okay. 
Longitudinally, if it is going to split, release the pollens, it is called as longitudinal pattern of dyson's and found in most of the plants which are dicticus. These are two celled anthers. Here the anthers are two celled in nature and it can be seen in case of Natura, Cisalpinia. Many of the flowers you can quote as an example for longitudinal dyson's of the anther. Third is called as porous. You can make out the meaning of this kind of reason. Porous. Through a pore, the pollens are going to be discharged out. This is very important character of family Solanaceae. Solanaceae family. Solanaceae is a brinjol family. Brinjol, tomato, tobacco, chili, datura. They belong. Even though datura has got long anther there, there is no porous reason in datura. Solanaceae members like brinjol, tomato, chili, physalis. They are example for the uh, flowers having, anthers having the porous kind of resins. Where the anther is again two sided here. Basic fixed kind of anther. Each anther node is provided with a small opening on the top. You can see the brinjal family or white brinjals are growing around the roadside. You can check the flower. At the top of the anther you can get small uh, black colored circular area. And this is a pore. And through this pore, both the anther nodes are provided with the pore. And through that pore, when the anther is ready to discharge the pollens, these pollens are going to be discharged. Okay? If it's going, there is no breaking up of the wall of the anther, longitudinal type of uh, resin. So this is different. And in this case, through that pore, the pore opens and all the pollens are thrown out of the anther. And this kind of resin is called as porous resin found in brinjot and tomato. You can write this specific example. Chili also is an example for the porous kind of resins. Okay, this is to be described. Right? To describe the anther, here first you are going to write the number of stamens. See that whether they are free or uh, adelphi or syngeny or synandry. Then see that whether it, there is any attachment with the sepal or petal or uh, perianth etc. Then check the filament of the anther whether it is flattened or it is uh, short or long etc. See that whether the Anthers are innate, basic fixed or uh, dose fixed, versatile. The next part and the last part we will describe is the license of the stamen. Either it may be transverse and it is exclusive character. You need not check once you uh, find out the character in an example. You remember the example, the entire family is characterized by that kind of license that is Malvasi family, longitudinal license, vertical slit is going to develop on the anther. So it is going to be highest longitudinally and if it is going to discharge the pollen through the porous pore, then it is called as porous resins. Okay? This completes the interaction description, the different terminologies. Correct? You draw the diagrams, very specific diagrams, check the description correctly and write down whatever things you require there. And if you have any doubt, you can ask me in the actual class which is going to start the next semester and all, you can call me and uh, uh, get your doubts solved or problems solved. Okay, thank you.